Welcome to Davenant Discussions. I'm Brad Belschner, and today we're talking about some of the implications of Davenant's four core pillars. In this one, we're talking about the implications of reason, specifically the question, why should Christians study pagan philosophy? Brad, you, you teach an undergraduate philosophy class, and I know that you make your students study pagans like Plato and Aristotle and these are the folks who we, uh, when Paul is talking about them in, in scripture, he says the gospel's foolishness to these Greeks. The, if the gospel's foolishness to them, if these are pagans who do not share our perspectives about God and Jesus, then wouldn't we say it's at best a, a waste of time to study them or possibly even toxic to study them? Well, sure. I think pagan philosophy, no one's going to say pagan philosophy can save you. you can't, it, can't, it can't teach you the gospel. And in fact, if you puffed up, with, which is Paul's concern about people who are puffed up with their knowledge of philosophy and think that they know a great deal, and that kind of arrogance can become an obstacle to receiving the faith in humility. But philosophy doesn't have to have that tenor at all. In fact, Socrates, instructor of, 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 of Plato, famously said that philosophy is about learning to know that you know nothing, right? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a training in recognition of your own ignorance and your own limitations. And philosophy practiced that way is, can, can actually be conducive to the kind of humility that is searching for truth that the gospel brings. But also, uh, philosophy, philosophy encompasses many things, right? It's not, it's not just to search for ultimate, ultimate reality that ultimately is given to us in scripture, but philosophy gives us the rules of logic and, and good reasoning, which Paul uses. The philosophy also tells us about the natural world and how, how things fit together. And to this, to this extent, you can see the biblical wisdom literature is, is doing philosophy in the, in the kind of way that Aristotle might. You know, when it says, go to the ant, thou sluggard, learn lessons from him, apply it to your life. At its best, that's what pagan philosophy is doing, too. But... That's fair enough, but how does that apply to pagan philosophy? That's, I can understand why we should study logic and argument and we should reason in general, but why is Aristotle worth studying? He's not a Christian. Well, I think if we look at the history of philosophy, nobody asked the kind of fundamental questions of what is the world, how does it fit together, who are we, why are we here, what are we supposed to be doing? Those basic questions, nobody asked those questions with the clarity and rigor that, that Plato and Aristotle did. And their answers are not, certainly not at all fully Christian answers, but they, they, they do frame the questions well. And I think if you look at uh, church history, the church is born into that context, the context of this Greek philosophy, and the church fathers recognize its usefulness as, as, as an apologetic tool, but also as a way of clarifying the discipline of Christian reflection on Scripture. And so right on through from the earliest days of the church all the way through the medieval period and the Reformation, these philosophers, Plato and increasingly Aristotle, are seen as uh, offering the framework of thought and the kind of discipline of thought that good Christian theology absolutely needs. So I think there's a huge burden of proof on anyone who would say, well, the church for centuries and centuries and centuries leaned heavily on these guys, but we now know better. By your own admission, though, these philosophers are distorted in their understanding of some things. And couldn't we just say, oh, uh, these early church fathers, yeah, they're coming from this perspective. They're talking about Greek philosophers. You know, Augustine is really into Plato. But why, why should we be so concerned about Plato just because Augustine was obsessed with him? Well, I think a lot of Christians now, it's fashionable to say, yeah, we need to get this, this Greek thought infected the church and it messed up our theology and we need to get it out and just go back to the Bible and read the Bible as the Bible without any kind of philosophical lens. I think what tends, I mean, I don't think it's really a question of, are you going to have a philosophy when you read scripture? I think it's a question of what philosophy and, and people who say, let's just let the Bible be the Bible and, and frame our, our worldview accordingly. When you look at the resulting system of doctrine that they put together out of the, the, the raw material of Scripture, it ends up looking suspiciously like some contemporary fashionable philosophy or other. And, and it, you really don't find 
any kind of systematic theology that doesn't have certain philosophical underpinnings. So I think it's not a question of whether, but which. And I would say, if we can choose which, this is a good one to choose. But I think it's also the case that it's overstated the extent to which, say, Greek ideas distorted uh, Christian theology. They did at times. They certainly they did. And there's, there's places where, I mean, the Reformation was partly a response to this and, and saying we need to get back to Scripture itself. But very often you find Christian thinkers are very self, very critical, uh, critical thinkers, and they say we need to use these Greek ideas to illuminate, uh, to, to, to ask clear questions about Scripture, to put the pieces together clearly. But we also need to recognize the limitations and recognize where Scripture challenges those, where Scripture offers us paradoxes, like the doctrine of the Trinity, which the doctrine of the Trinity is formulated using philosophical terminology, but in a way that kind of turns it all on its head, that says the God is revealed in the Bible does is foolishness to the Greeks. So I think the Christian theological tradition has been discriminating about that. It learned from the tools of philosophy and also recognize their limitations, recognize when Scripture is going to go beyond them. So you're saying there's a broader shared reality that we have with these ancients like Aristotle and that we can benefit from the precision that they took in investigating our shared reality. Absolutely. And then, in fact, the church historically has benefited from that. Absolutely. And we should too. Thanks.